Community Association was incorporated in 1955 as a mission project by the Presbyterian Churches and the Stony Run Society of Friends. Its purpose is to serve the underprivileged youth of East Baltimore. McKim is located at the corner of Baltimore and Asquith Streets. There is the center itself, which was built in 1835 by Isaac McKim as Baltimore's first free school, and the Quaker Meeting House, built in 1781 by the Patapsco Meeting of Friends. Presently, the neighboring population is 98% black and is characterized by a large number of children, a disproportionate number of single-parent families, and many elderly poor. Most of McKim's families live in nearby public housing. McKim has always been a place where children can grow academically, socially, and spiritually. Good evening, I'm Lisa Robinson. Our top story, the implosion of the Lafayette Court's high-rise complex. Lily Hamer is standing by live at the site that once held six 11-story buildings. Lily, what's it like there now? Lisa, Lafayette Court's, of course, as we once knew it, is gone. Yet the people are still coming back. Coming back with lots of emotions about what happened here. I can't believe that trail is still sitting there like that. The spectators keep coming to Lafayette Court well after the implosion of six of the city's high-rise projects is over. It was drug infested and everything down here, so I would, I would like to see how it's going to be with the low-rise stuff. The destruction of the low-income housing is a happy occasion for Vanzella Barnes. Her daughter is disabled now after being caught in the middle of the war zone the projects had become. Kashmir nearly died after being hit by a dirt bike. The kids be playing on the playgrounds, the guys come around with the dirt bikes, and it was no longer a safer place for them to play. While the implosion closed the door on a lot of bad memories for people who lived here, some say it also opened the door to a number of opportunities for people who often had none. The future looked very bright, and that is going to improve. And it's gonna... Bam grew up in a tough Baltimore neighborhood where positive role models were few and far between. It was a common thing, someone dying or gunshots or ambulance just passing by. I mean, it was, it was really bad. But one day, he caught a glimpse of a better life. A Bruce Lee movie was playing at what used to be this local theater. To six-year-old Willie, Bruce Lee represented the possibility of a future outside the neighborhood projects. After leaving that movie theater, I knew in my heart and in my mind that I was going to be something bigger and better than a drug dealer or a, a street hustler or a gang member. So I began to practice and imitate all those different movements that I seen him demonstrating on the screen, which led to trying to demonstrate those movements that I seen in books and magazines. See the Bruce Lee movie. And that was the only positive hero that I had in my life. So I just wanted to be just like that person. I look at myself as being one of those kids that a lot of people talk about being bad kids today. The martial arts really turned me into a good person. At 27, Mr. Johnson, known as the BAM, is a national karate champion and the first African-American on the cover of Karate Kung Fu Illustrated. An instructor for 10 years, the band now has his own studio in Laurel. I took all the negatives and now I turned them into something positive to be able to teach people how to really understand a lot of the people that we look at as... But emulating Bruce Lee proved difficult. Like many of his friends, Johnson became involved with illegal activities. I was responsible for the violence that began to occur in our community. Um, I was a part of that foundation that was being laid for my generation. At age 23, he paid the price for his actions with a prison sentence. It was a turning point. Forced to take a hard look at what he had become, Johnson realized he could summon inner strength to shape his own life. Uh, I get lost for a minute there. That's what martial arts is all about. It's about standing up humbly and saying that 
I choose not to live this way anymore. I choose to live this way. I'm not at conflict. I'm not in conflict with you. I just refuse to cooperate with this manner of behavior. Willie Johnson threw himself back into martial arts training when he was released from prison. He began entering and winning martial arts tournaments. Six times he was named world champion in the U.S. Open men's martial arts champion. What it is for an opera singer to perform at La Scala and a painter to be hung in the Louvre, it is for a martial artist to visit China. With the Willie is just back from a month there, working and training with the best of the best. China was a dream come true for me. It was like I wanted to... All my life I wanted to be better than Bruce Lee or someday meet Bruce Lee. But this dream was better than meeting Bruce Lee because I went to the fatherland where martial arts was created. But Johnson learned more from his journey than refinements of technique. He spent time with the Chinese people and found it was good to be an American. We have it good. I mean, the people that think that they're poor here in America, they're not poor. If you want to see what, how poor people live, go to China. As Johnson reminisced on his trip and played with his souvenir worry balls, he recalled the only thing that frightened him, the Chinese diet of rice, dough, and tiny portions of meat. I just lived on bread, butter, and jelly. That was the closest thing to American food, and Coca-Cola. Back home, Willie Bam Johnson continues to train youngsters from all over Baltimore. He has several protégés he says could compete with anyone, and he retained hopes for his own career. ...and sports karate. The band was born. In 1994, Johnson was chosen for a starring role on WMAC Masters, a television program that presents martial artists as role models. Hey, Van. Sorry about using my staff out there. Uh, it was a reflex action. It won't happen again. No problem, Turbo. It definitely made our match more interesting. Far from his old neighborhood, the band has opened a martial arts school where he teaches more than mere physical expertise. All right, give me 25 good jumping jacks. Are we ready? Yeah. All right, let's rock and roll. Begin! One, Come on, two, let's go! A lot of times people talk about Bam as being a world champion, and I like to characterize him as a world-class individual. That's really important in the martial arts, to have someone that sets that kind of example so that you can have something to really strive for and to continuously be challenged. Okay, come on, Mr. Marco. Rock and roll, go, come on. The band had begun instructing his son, Marco, in martial arts at a young age. Come on, let's work, let's work. And now Marco helps his father teach. It was important for me to get my son involved in the martial arts for the sole purpose of making sure he does not make the same mistakes that I made. Marco Johnson appears with his father on the WMAC Masters TV program. Together, they stress to the viewers the importance of solid family life. The principles of martial arts show me how to become a better parent, shows me how to become a better friend, woo -doo, woo -doo. Ah. a better human being. There's no me without martial arts. All right, thank you. Family is one of the very cornerstones of the martial arts. For centuries, techniques of the grandmasters were handed down to their children, who then taught their children. Today, WMAC schools emphasize family as a very important part of the overall martial arts experience. We're all about family at the WMAC. 